Okay, hi there. Welcome to a, a macro video. We're just going to take a few minutes to think about uh, using good, simple ADAS analysis when helping to analyze the effect of a change in the currency and a change in the price of oil. So this is basic macroeconomics to get good marks on KAA, knowledge application and analysis. Using ADAS, and ADAS analysis, explain possible effects of a fall in the value of the pound against the US dollar. Well, here's some data. This shows the uh, the quarterly value of the UK exchange rate against the dollar, how many dollars a pound will buy. And you can see that over the years, this is since 2008, the pound has been depreciating against the US dollar. The pound has been buying less dollars in nominal terms from over the years. Quite a few depreciations, particularly 2016 and again in 2008, 2009. Over the period, over the last 12 years, the pound has fallen from basically $2 to the pound to just over $1.30. So it's quite a significant depreciation. When you get a question on the effects of a currency depreciation, you know, don't, don't overcomplicate it. Stick to the basics. Think about some of the main effects. Obviously, if you have to evaluate the effects, then you're going to go into more detail. I'm not going to do any evaluation in this simple video. Just think on the basic analysis. If the pound goes down, against the US dollar, the sterling price of many of the things we have to import will go up. You see things like energy and finish and copper and cocoa and tea are priced in dollars. Many global globally traded commodities are priced in dollars. So if the pound goes down, the sterling price of the things that we have to import will go up. And uh, another effect is that export prices in the United States will go down. So if, if I'm trying to sell goods and services overseas in the States, a weaker pound should in theory allow me to sell at a cheaper price in the United States. That should make me more price competitive. All the other things being the same, and so we're not going to evaluate this in this video, in theory a weaker pound, a depreciating pound, stimulates the trade sector, in particular exports, although it can also lead to an increase in cost push inflation. So the impact of a depreciating pound can affect both AD and AS. There's the equation for aggregate demand, C plus I plus G plus X minus M. The X minus M is the trade balance. So hopefully a depreciating pound would lead to higher export sales. The volume of exports would go up. For example, tourism would benefit. It may well be the case that demand for imports goes down because they're more expensive. So there could be an improvement or a change in the net trade balance. And also potentially a rise in investment by businesses. If you're a car maker and you're selling more cars overseas because of a weaker pound, might that then lead to uh, an increase in investment demand because you've got to ramp up capacity. Aggregate supply is also affected by an exchange rate. Many students don't build this into their analysis. I think you should. So for many businesses across the economy, import costs will go up. You see, the things that are priced in dollars will now become more expensive if you have to import them coming into the country. If you're a power plant, your gas or your coal will cost more. If you're a car maker, perhaps you're importing steel and glass, that will cost more. If you're a farmer, maybe you're buying fertilizer from the States, that will cost you more. So there will be an increase in costs, and that's going to affect aggregate supply in the short term. Keep things nice and simple with ADS analysis. Don't go, don't overcomplicate. So a weaker pound could well lead to a rise in demand, to AD2. I put in there in brackets, rise in X, just telling the examiner there's been an increase in export sales. And conceivably, that causes GDP to rise, conceivably there could also be an increase in investment. If a weaker pound stimulates greater domestic production and higher profits, then that could could cause an accelerator effect and increase in investment as well. So I've, I've drawn the AD curve shifting out to AD3 this time. And again, I put in brackets rise in I, rise in investment, just to illustrate the point to the examiner. So all things being equal, a, a fall in the pound could be good news for GDP, although potentially some inflationary pressure, depends on the elasticity of the supply curve. Uh, and here's a little flow chart, fall in the value of the pound, leads to an increase in export demand, export sales, a rise in exports is an injection of demand into the circular flow. Rising export demand leads to higher profits. That means there's more funds available to fund investment. So in theory, it could lead to a rise in planned investment, another injection of demand. But we also know there's going to be a change in import prices. A weaker pound makes imports more expensive. 
So the aggregate supply on the short term may shift to SRAS2. And again, I've put in there to make it clear high import costs. And so you can see how we can build up an ADAS diagram to illustrate uh, what's happening. It's a good diagram, I like that. The net effect could actually be quite a big, big rise in inflation. Depends on the fall in the pound, etc. Lots of evaluation points, but we'll leave that for another time. Using ADAS analysis, ADAS analysis, explain. So when asked to evaluate, explain the possible impact of a fall in the world price of oil in the UK in 2020. So this is what happened in the price of oil. Again, since 2008, volatile for a large parts of the last decade, the price of oil has been at or above $100 a barrel. But just in the last year or so, you can see the price has fallen quite substantially, particularly during 2020, as a result of the coronavirus pandemic, when the derived demand for oil from transport and industry fell away very sharply. So what's the impact on AD and AS? Well, again, go back to basics. Aggregate demand is C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Now, the UK is a net importer of oil. We export oil, but we also import more, actually, in value terms. So if the price of oil goes down, that will mean that our spending on oil imports goes down as well, particularly if demand is priced inelastic. So the value of the M bit might go down. And of course, it's minus M. So a fall in minus M is effectively a plus. So a fall in import spending could increase aggregate demand. But on the other hand, oil prices going down could make uh, investment in the oil sector less profitable in the UK, up in the North Sea, near Aberdeen, what have you. There could also maybe renewable energy becomes less commercially viable if, if, if oil is cheaper. So there could be a downside to investment on the aggregate demand side. Crucially, uh, I think the main effect would be on short-run aggregate supply. The UK is a net importer of oil. So if the world price comes down, that's going to lower the cost for many firms right across the economy. If you're a transport business, your fuel will be cheaper. If you're a power station using oil, energy prices will go down. And then conceivably households also will face lower fuel costs as well. Let's go back to our diagram, keep it simple. I think the main effect would probably be lower import prices because the cost of oil has come down. So it's good news for GDP, brings down inflationary pressure, but also potentially a rise in aggregate demand if we're spending less on imports of oil. So AD may shift out. And again, you take the latest equilibrium points, so that might move national income to Y3 uh, and the price level to GPL3. What we're doing here, everybody, is just basically using supply, aggregate supply and demand analysis, just to try and explain some possibilities. The evaluation is all the calibration, discussion, challenging and questioning about the extent, and that comes that comes with the higher mark questions. And there's our arrow showing the shifts in the curves. So when you when you're building ADAS analysis diagrams, keep them simple. Just identify first of all, first of all the main effect that you think's pertinent. Focus on that to start with. Build that into your analysis to get those good early marks. Potentially consider secondary effects. So in both our examples in this video, we thought about a shift in both AD and AS. So you can develop the diagram. Don't over, don't over complicate things. Keep it nice and straightforward, nice and clean. And please remember to ace your diagrams. Label the axes, label the curves, and always draw equilibrium points to the Y and the X axis. Uh, loads and loads of videos on our Tutor Tube channel. I was thinking just the other day how many other subjects we have. We've got sociology, we've got politics, we've got psychology, we've got business and of course loads of videos on economics. So please do pay us a visit if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe to our channel. Okay, thank you very much indeed.